You got it. You got it. You gotta pray to me. <laughs> Why didn't we come over here? <laughs> First cast. Got one on the little spinner. Hey guys, today's video is sponsored by Good Chop. If you're not familiar with Good Chop, it is high quality meat, sustainable seafood with no antibiotics or hormones delivered straight to your front door. Good Chop offers convenient contact free delivery right to your doorstep. And Good Chop uses only American farms and fisheries to source their food. So when you purchase from them, you're supporting someone like us or another small farm that's out there producing a high quality, fresh product to come to your table. I didn't know they had dessert, look at that. While we do try to grow and harvest as much of our own meat as we can, it's not 100%. And that's not possible for everyone. There's some things that we just would rather buy, like seafood. We can get high quality seafood from Good Chop. I've never had sable fish before, so we're gonna try it out today. So if you're ready to give Good Chop a try, you can go to goodchop.com slash YouTube and use code AFH120 at checkout. It's gonna give you $120 off across your first four boxes today. Blackened sable fish. That's a first for me. Another good reason to try Good Chop because I've never had sable fish. Trash, you're not getting my fish. They have something new on their menu all the time. Uh, check out their website, see what's up on the menu. Don't you dare think I forgot about my dessert. Like I said, if you're interested in trying Good Chop, go to goodchop.com slash YouTube, use code AFH120. You're gonna get $120 off across your first four boxes, or just click the link in the description box down below. How about some cheesecake? Oh, mm. Ooh. That's good stuff. I'd go right up there on that point and start. That's where I would start. Well, what's up guys? It's Daniel in Houston from Arms Family Homestead. And uh, whew, it is a frosty cool morning in Southern Oklahoma. We should have brought gloves. 32 degrees, not a, hardly a cloud in the sky. It's gonna be a beautiful day. We are back on the Trout River, hoping, hoping to do a little catch, clean and cook trout fishing adventure today. Uh, this is the first time Houston and I have trout fished this year. These are uh, not a native species to this river. They are stocked in here. This is a uh, state-run program. They come in and stock this, uh, this river from, I think, November to March with mostly rainbow trout. But uh, we've been coming down here for, I don't know, I guess three or four years now. Three yeah. years? And uh, always have some pretty good luck. Not really usually going to catch giants. But we do catch a lot of fish, and we're gonna take some home, I think, maybe build a fire and cook them on a creek bank at the house. Mm, what do you think? sounds good. Wrap them up some tin foil. Yeah. We better start uh, fishing. We can't count our chickens before they hatch. Yeah. So Houston's got the uh, cameraman Ron special rigged up, the old runt rod, and we're gonna be fishing. We've got some really light gear, uh, basically with a, a small weight and a swivel and a leader and a teeny tiny little bitty trout hook and the bait we use is really there's a pretty much everybody here uses about the same thing there's a couple different options but these little power bait trout nuggets work great because these are hatchery raised fish and they're used to feeding on little food pellets about that size so the way this rig set up you just toss it out there your weight sinks to the bottom and your leader floats up and you hope a trout comes along, right? Yeah. Let's see oh. that hook real quick. You can barely see it. Look at that teeny tiny little hook. And we're just gonna Literally bury just that hook stick in this it right down in there. In this little power bait ball. Kind of mold it around the hook. And toss it out. We're kinda of frozen. <laughs> I'm telling you though, it doesn't get any more beautiful than this river. Look at that steam coming through the sunrise. Got the waterfalls pretty spot and it's public we're fishing public waters go for it i 
All right. Who's going to catch the first fish? Me. Probably you since your line's in the water, huh? Yeah. First fish. First fish. Probably a nine pound trout, Houston. <laughs> you think? No, I don't know about that. <laughs> Let's see if it's a keeper. Oh, that's a pretty one. That water cold? Yeah, it's pretty chilly. All right. Second cast. First fish of the morning. Pretty. Like I said, they're not they're not gonna be giant rainbow trout. We're not gonna catch monsters, but uh that's a perfect size little eating fish, Houston. I say uh we don't waste our chances and put a few on the stringer. What do you think? Yeah. So we're allowed to keep three trout per person. And each stringer has to be labeled. So this one's got Houston's name on it. I didn't grab mine out of there, but three trout per person. And uh, we're probably only gonna keep three today. We're not gonna keep a bunch, so. All right, Houston, I'm out fishing you already. It's your turn. that one fish and that's the only bite either one of us have uh, gotten so far i think we're gonna pack up and move on downstream and head to the next uh, set of waterfalls they stock these trout all up and down the river and uh, sometimes you just kind of have to work your way through to figure out where they're holding at It is very pretty. Sun is blinding me, but man, it feels good. Houston wants to go down here and try his lucky spot. He's got one rock he likes to go out on. Kind of sticks out in the water and usually catches quite a few fish. <laughs> Somebody left a broken fishing pole. People are in their trash. Look at this. They're using this stump as a trash can. Come on, folks. That's a public place. If we want to keep it open to the public, we got to keep it clean, Houston. Yeah. All right. It's Houston's Lucky Rock. And there is trout bait all over it. I see bits and pieces of trout bait everywhere. So you're not the only one that thinks this is a Lucky Rock? No. all it takes in the money spot right mm -hmm. better not lose that runt rod catch a big old trap and he's gonna yank it in the water yeah i'm gonna sit right here watch it you got a nibble Here, fishy, fishy, fishy. Mm -hmm. Got to find the sweet spot. A lot of times these trout all hang together. We can fish for 20 minutes, not get a bite. Cast into one spot, like catch a fish, and then you catch five or six in a row right there. Not always, but... I didn't look on Facebook to see when exactly the last time they stocked it was, but usually it's about once a week this time of year. Once every two weeks sometimes. Well, the Lucky Rock is not producing any bites right now. We're gonna come over here and try this falls. We've uh, caught a lot of fish, both above and below this set of falls in the past, so. Whoop. Tuck your boots in. Tuck my boots in. Tuck your pants in your boots, sorry, whatever. Huh? Good luck. 
Please don't get wet. I would rather you not jump. That'd be a bad idea. I don't know if I can watch this. It's 32 degrees out here and he's thinking about jumping from rock to rock. Bad idea. I don't know why you're fishing way up in the trees. I'm not trying to. I was trying to fish by the All this river. All this river to fish in Houston's up in a cedar tree. I was trying to fish by the bank. Uh-huh. Yeah, I was. Come on now, catch fish. One nailed it. Oh, there he is. Come on. Take it. It's the first bite I've had since my second cast. Like an hour and a half ago. I don't think he took it though. But I had a bite. I bet he stole my bait. Oh, nope. Come on, fish, cooperate. It's hard to make a fishing video if you don't catch any fish, man. Guess who's back? Back. Oh, missed him. I think I found a little spot where the fish are. Probably lost my bait again, but I'm gonna give it just a second. Part of the problem that I know I'm having is uh, it's so cold our, our uh, power bait's kind of frozen up. It's hard, you can barely put it on a hook. And uh, so I'm sure that makes it hard for the fish to get hooked. So I think what I'll do just change it up and just see because I've got some some uh, fish egg bait which not really fish eggs it's imitation fish egg bait it's like a little bit different presentation but it's much softer and the hook will protrude through that a little bit easier let's see if they'll bite that red fish egg Got one. You got him that time. About time. That gum. He ain't a big monster, but you know what? When you're not catching very many fish, I'll take it. Let's see if we can. Yeah, these things are so strong. They're such a pretty fish, but man, they are so strong. Totally different feel than holding on to a bass or a bluegill or something these trout are just they're just different moving in on my spot are you hmm. I see oh well I guess it's a public river I got my fish off the hook but uh had to cut my line or accidentally cut my line so I'm gonna retie I caught that one on those fish eggs but like I said I had several bites on the power bait first it's just semi frozen power bait and semi frozen fingers here too not to mention but there we go Alrighty, retied, rebaited. We'll see if it was just one fish messing with me or if I'm on to something here. Well, I can't say for sure that it was just one fish messing with me, but I've tried several more times. I hadn't got any bites and I finally got tangled on a rock and broke off. So I'm gonna change it up a little bit because our 
power bait strategy is just not killing it this morning. I'm gonna go to a little inline spinner bait. Some people call it a rooster tail. Nice flashy lure. It's got a little pink color to it. Cover a little more water. Maybe, maybe try something a little bit different just to see if we can get a fish or two to bite because it's slow this morning. And my hands are frozen. You had any bites? No. You got it. You got it. You got all the friends of me. <laughs> We are uh, <laughs> definitely getting our tails kicked today. I've only caught two fish and Houston's at zero. Usually we come down here and catch 15, 20 fish. Look at this cool spot. Big giant hole of water right here on the river. Nice falls. Probably not gonna be able to get to where I wanna go. It's all grown up right now. But I'm gonna try it for a few minutes. I knew I was going to throw out there and hang on that rock. Guess I'll go over there on the falls before I fish it. No bites over here either, huh? Man, I've tried all the falls. I've got one more... Uh, one more spot we can go try. Hopefully we can at least get one limit of fish on the day. Yeah. Kind of embarrassing making YouTube videos not catching fish. Hey, but we got two, that's one a piece. Yeah. I mean, I caught both of them, but. Look what I did. It's moss. Made a moss, moss flat, huh? Yeah. Well, get our stringer, you carry my fish for me. If you, you can carry handle, my pole for me. if you can handle carrying all those big fish. That are small. Man. Hmm. My fish small. looks so much nicer than yours. Okay, we moved up river about, I don't know, quarter of a mile, half mile. We're gonna try. This spot's usually uh, done us well in the past. A lot of fly fishermen use this area because you got these big wide open falls and big holes, but uh, we're gonna try it. Maybe this area is not fished out. Why didn't we come over here? <laughs> First cast. Got one on the little spinner. Maybe we were in the wrong spot this morning, Houston. That's our third keeper to go on our stringer. Sorry, redo that. I said that's our third keeper to go on our stringer this morning, so. Not a giant, but uh, might have to have some pliers to get that little treble hook out of his mouth, probably. Maybe not. I'm telling you, are those not the prettiest little fish you've ever seen? I kind of almost feel bad killing them, but they taste way too good not to eat them. Got one? Yeah. I was reeling it in slow. Oh, that was a good one. What in the world? You were reeling it in slow and he snagged it? No. That was a really good one. I was reeling it in and it just came after it. Gotcha. Reeling it in slow. Well, might have learned something there. So not just a uh, knockout banger day, but we did manage to get one limit of trout. We're allowed three per person 
you can catch and release as many as you want but if you're going to keep them three per person but we just want three we're going to take these home wrap them up in tin foil and cook them over an open fire i think so houston's still out there fishing in the background but i'm going to clean these up the easiest thing to do is just do it right here on the river i'm going to split them up the middle pull all the guts out squeeze the bloodline out of their out of the backbone and uh throw them in a bag be good to go I get all the guts out you see that blood line in there i'm just going to take my thumb my fingernail and push down on it and i can push all that blood out it's a very simple fish to clean okay. got him all cleaned up guts removed blood line out the last thing i'm gonna do is remove the head i probably won't show that for you guys but i'm gonna remove the head put it in a ziploc baggie and take him home so the original goal for the day was we were going to go out and catch these trout, come home and go down by the creek and build a fire and put them in a tin foil packet and cook them over a bed of coals because that's Houston's favorite way of eating these trout by far out of all the different ways we've tried. But life happens and uh, here we are, it's after dark and uh, we did not get to do that. It was crazy windy all day, had a plumber come over and do a bunch of work. We didn't have water in our house for several hours. But that doesn't affect what we did at the creek. But anyways, you get it. Life happens. And uh, we didn't get to make it down to the creek and cook our trout. So I'm going to cook them in the house. I've got a cast iron skillet heating up with some butter and a little bit of oil. I have an idea. I'm going to try a uh, butterfly pan fried trout. I don't know. We'll see if it works. So here's what I did. I took these trout and I cut the fins off and I just butterflied them open. And we're going to cook them straight in a cast iron skillet. The spine and all the rib bones are still in there. Trout are a little bit of a bony fish. But the good thing is, is as they cook, that spine will come out. There's a little bit of that bloodline I was telling you guys about earlier. Not a lot, but uh, there's a lot of meat on these guys for as small of a fish as they really are, Houston. You know what? Mm -hmm. So, I'm not going to deep fry them. I'm not rolling them in cornmeal. We're not, cook we're not going to fry them outside. We're just going to do a little pan fried trout and i'm going to season them up with some everglades heat because that's one of my favorites right now about out it's almost gone i think i have another one though all right i think we're going to do this skin side down first now we're not wanting the uh cast iron skillet just scalding hot like if we were making a true blackened fish. I'm not really going, I mean, it is well seasoned, but it's not really going to be blackened. So we're just going to let them do their thing in there and get all good and yummy. Yeah. All right. The meat's starting to turn white around the edges. I'm going to go ahead and flip these over. Let them cook in that yummy butter. Meat side down for a while, right? So, I gotta flip it. There we go. Ooh. Perfect. That one didn't flip so well. All right, y'all. So since we didn't have a whole stringer full of fish, obviously we're not having a fish fry or a whole meal. It's a good thing today's video was sponsored by Good Chop, and we got a box full of meat, right? Pearson, did you get a haircut today? Dang, you look different. No. Okay. <laughs> in all reality, though, these little trout are very tasty. There are a lot of bones in them, so you have to be careful and work your way around the bones. But it's a very delicious white flaky meat. We did uh, cook these skin on, and that will literally just peel right off the skin. Look at that. That entire piece of fish just peeled right off of the skin. Give us a taste test. Oh, mom's home. Now Gemma's gonna start barking. Really good. <laughs> you were awful quiet. I didn't think you were ever gonna give me an answer. It was really good. Nice flaky white fresh trout that was swimming in the river this morning. I wish I had a lemon. I need to squeeze a little fresh lemon juice on it. 
but that's hard to beat. Mm. You know what can beat it though? What? Uh. Nothing. I'm trying to think of it. The Pretty much nothing, I guess. The fish from the ocean. I forgot what it's called. Mahi Mahi. Mahi Mahi. Houston's favorite fish is Mahi Mahi. I'm not real sure why. That's that's a good fish. It's nice, white, pretty, flaky meat, but it's Houston's favorite for sure. So we're going to scrape what we can off the bone here. It's just Houston. High. Mom's just now getting home. Emily's got plans tonight. And Jim is going to bark because that's what Jim does. Well, even though we didn't catch a ton of fish today, I had a great time. And, you know, we got to get on this uh, fly fishing game. I think this is this is our year. We got to, both of us, I think we should have a goal of catching a trout out of the river on a fly rod this year. Well, hang on. Wait a minute. It's the end of the year. How about next year? Yeah. 2024. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. Uh, we're not very good fly fishermen, but we need to learn, so... Anyways, guys, that's all we've got for today. As cameraman Ron said, do you remember what Ron says? Do something today. Oh, uh, do something nice today to help, cause, to help somebody because it might just change their life. Well, something you're close. Do right. something today to make somebody smile because yeah, you never know. It like. just might change the world, right? Yeah. Okay, what else? So, guys, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And as always, we'll see you on the next video. Peace.